Lately, I've been working on an immersive video project shot with the Canon R5C and edited in DaVinci Resolve, and I've found the Cardiverse plugin to be essential to this workflow. Cardiverse is an incredible set of tools that enables several VR editing features in Resolve. In this video, we're using Cardiverse with a specific focus on 180 degree VR video shot with the Canon R5C and the 5.2 millimeter dual fisheye lens. But information from this video will also help people with other camera systems. Now, some people are nervous about using Cardiverse because they think it requires knowledge of Fusion, which is the module in DaVinci Resolve Studio for designing motion graphics and doing complex compositing. We will use Fusion, but just for the installation process. Once Cardiverse is installed, there are core features that you can use entirely on the edit page in Resolve without ever going back to Fusion. And for people who do work in Fusion, I'll be publishing another video on this channel soon that shows how to work with Cardiverse on that Fusion page. And big thanks go out to Andrew Hazelden for creating and offering Cardiverse for free and offering his guidance as I assemble these videos. So let's talk about the software that we'll need. Of course, we're using the full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio. We're also going to need a third-party zip file extractor, specifically something that can unzip a multi-part zip archive. On Windows, you might use WinZip, WinRAR, or 7-Zip. On the Mac, I like to use a free utility called the Unarchiver. Choose one of these utilities and make sure you have it installed before continuing. For this workflow, we are specifically not using Canon's VR utility to import videos. We can sort of think of Cardiverse as an alternative to Canon's VR utility, but it's free and it gives you significantly more control. However, it does take some work to set up, and that's why we're here. So next, we're going to install Reactor and Cardiverse. Reactor is an open source package manager for DaVinci Resolve. You will need to install Reactor, then use Reactor to install the Cardiverse plugin. And of course, I'll walk you through that process. The group that makes and supports Reactor is called We Suck Less, and there's a link to their website in the comments. On the front page, you can scroll to see different forum topics, but we want to click where it says Looking for Reactor. There's great information in this post, but we'll just click the button to download the LUA file. I've already downloaded that file, and I have it saved on my desktop. So next, we can go to DaVinci Resolve. And with the project open, click the Fusion button at the bottom to go to the Fusion page. You do have to be on the Fusion page to install Reactor. Find the LUA file that we just downloaded and drag it onto the node space on the Fusion page. I do want to install it, so I'll click Install and Launch. Now, this will take a few minutes, and if it opens some file browser windows during the installation, you can close those. While this is installing, I'm going to skip forward in time. And when that installation is finished, make sure to click on the Resolve window and you'll see the Reactor panel. If you do close that window, you can get back to it by going to the Workspace menu, to Scripts, to Reactor, and choose Open Reactor. And now we can use Reactor to install the Cardiverse effects that we need. And even if you have set up Cardiverse before, it's still a good idea to go through this and make sure everything is updated. I'll be using some tools here that were updated in June of 2025. On the left side, select the Cardiverse category. The core tools should already be selected. In addition to the main Carta VR tools, I believe the KVR Viewer, KVR Vignette, and KVR Plane are essential. And you should be careful not to uncheck any of these default tools because some of them depend on others. If it's not selected, you should also make sure to enable the KVR Super ST map. We definitely need that one. And I'm going to enable the option for the ST map templates. Now, there is some important context here that you should understand. An important part of this workflow is to convert the dual fisheye image, which is how the raw video is captured by cameras like the R5C, into the equa rectangular format, which is used in most editing scenarios. This process requires a specific reference file called an ST map, which maps out the unique geometry of your lens and your camera. For the best possible results, you would need to generate your own ST map based on your own footage, but that's a complex, difficult process. Andrew Hazelden, the creator of Cardiverse, has provided a set of instructions for creating your own ST map if you want to do that, and a link for that is included in the description. 
But even better, for those of us who do not want to or cannot build our own ST maps, Andrew has also included this optional ST map template based on a Canon R5C with a 5.2 millimeter dual fisheye lens. Now this will not match your lens and your footage perfectly, but for most situations, this pre-made template is close enough and it can save you a lot of work. Okay, back to the setup. With those options set, I'll click install or update and give it some time to install. When the installation is finished, we can close the reactor window and to be safe, I'll quit and restart DaVinci Resolve. And now that we have everything installed, we need to prepare the STMAP file. I'll open a project in Resolve, and if you're not already on the Fusion page, you can click the Fusion button at the bottom to go there. Then go to the Workspace menu, to Scripts, to Reactor, to Tools, and then choose Show Comps Folder. Here in this folder, we'll go to the subfolder for Cardiverse, then to Carta VP, then to ST Maps, then to the Canon folder. Now, at the time of this recording, we just see one folder for the R5C. You may see other options in the future, but since we're working with the R5C, we'll go to the R5C folder, then go to the folder for the dual fisheye lens, and we find these three zip files. Reactor cannot deliver the full ST map as a single file because of file size limitations. So this is why we need a zip utility that can open a multi-part zip archive. You can right click on the first file, go to open with and choose the zip utility that we discussed at the beginning of this video. I'm using the unarchiver. And when that's finished, you'll see a new folder which contains this file that ends in .exr. Once you have the EXR file, I think it's a good idea to copy it somewhere where you can easily find it in the future. So for me, I'll open the drive where I have my project files. I'll make a folder and call it Tools. I'll copy that EXR file and paste it into that new folder. So it will be there when I need it. And I think it's important to see if we open that STMAP file, we can see that the resolution is 8640 by 4320. More on that in a moment. Okay, now we have all the software installed and we can use the core Cardiverse tools without going back to the Fusion page. In Resolve, I have a project open where I have two clips in the timeline. If you're not on the edit page, just click the edit button at the bottom to go there. If we go to the media pool and click the information button on one of these clips, we see that these are raw CRM files. So I did not use the Canon VR utility or anything else to import videos from the camera. I took the raw CRM files directly from the camera's memory card, copied them to my project drive, and imported them directly into Resolve. Using the raw CRM files directly gives us more control, it optimizes the quality of the video, and it allows you to work with HDR color if you need to. Next, I'll click the gear button in the bottom right to see our project settings. In the master settings category, I want you to see that I set my timeline resolution to 8640 by 4320, which matches the resolution of the ST map file that we're using. Now, this is important, so let's take a quick look at resolutions. The equirectangular VR video that we will be editing should be in a two to one ratio for best quality. Each eye should be a square frame, so the total side by side frame should be a two to one ratio. The raw video that I shot on the Canon R5C was recorded at 8192 by 4320. That resolution is close, but it is not a 2 to 1 ratio. The STMAP file that we're using has a resolution of 8640 by 4320. This is a 2 to 1 ratio based on the height of the source footage. After using this STMAP, the resolution of our converted footage will be at that resolution, 8640 by 4320. If you use a different STMAP file with a different resolution, you should set your project to match that resolution. But with the STMAP template file for the Canon R5C included with Cardiverse, this is the resolution that we want. So this project is set up with that resolution with a frame rate of 59.94, which matches my source footage. And in the project settings, I'll go over to the image scaling category. And for both the input scaling and the output scaling, it's good to set the mismatched resolution option to stretch frame to all corners. So back in the project, we'll start by converting the dual fisheye footage into the equirectangular format. In the top left, click the effects button to open the effects panel, select the effects category, 
scroll down to the warp section and find the KVR Super ST map. This is one of the Cardiverse tools that we installed. You can drag that directly onto a clip in the timeline. And at first, the image just goes black. If you see a prompt asking you to select a file, just close that for now. At the top right, you can click the button to open or close the inspector panel. So make sure that panel is open and make sure to select a clip in the timeline, then select effects in the properties panel. And I see the KVR Super ST map effect that I just applied. But I have to select an ST map file. So click browse and navigate to that ST map file that we prepared earlier. If you have footage from a different camera, you'll need a different ST map file. And now we see the equirectangular view of this footage instead of the fisheye view. But we're not finished yet because next we need to set the 3D convergence. So in the effects controls, I'll switch to the anaglyph view. With the anaglyph mode selected, you should zoom into the center of the image and choose your convergence point. Now, I'm going to really oversimplify a process that can be much more complicated because I want to make this easy and accessible. Keep in mind, this is not necessarily the best way to do this, but it is an easy way that generally gets good results. Some people will tell you to choose the most distant object in the frame and converge on that. But I'm going to choose our performer's face because that's where the focus of the camera is set. In the inspector, adjust the left-right convergence using the X shift control until the red and blue come together, making the image monochrome on that convergence point. Now, in my case, I did not adjust the up and down separation, but you almost certainly will. That's because the ST map file provided with Cardiverse was actually created using this exact video sample. So we're seeing sort of the best case scenario with alignment. But in most cases, you will need to adjust the Y shift until everything is aligned horizontally, then adjust your X shift until your convergence is set. And at this point, if you have a pair of red, blue anaglyph glasses, you can take a look and see the 3D effect here. And once your convergence is set, you can just go back to the RGB view mode and you'll probably need to set your zoom scale back to fit. And now we have an equirectangular side-by-side -side image with the 3D convergence set. This is the format that we will need for most editing scenarios. Now, you do have to do this work in every clip in your timeline. If I bring in another clip from the same interview, as long as the camera has not moved at all, I could copy and paste the effect from one clip to another. But for every new clip that was shot in a different location or with a different camera, you will need to manually apply that effect and set the convergence. So moving on, if you zoom into the center of the frame, you can actually see that the camera lenses are visible in the frame. That's how wide the 180 degree field of view is. If you use the Canon VR utility, that can actually apply a black mask to cover those lenses. But we're not using the Canon utility. The Cardiverse tools do not cover the lens automatically, but there is a tool here that you can use. So I'll reset the zoom to fit. And in the effects panel, I'll go to the generator section and find the option for KVR vignette. This KVR vignette tool will work directly in the timeline from the edit page, but at the time of this recording, it will only work in projects with SDR color management. If you are working with a project with HDR, high dynamic range, you will need to use the KVR vignette inside of Fusion, which is a topic that I'm going to cover in a separate video. So if you're working here on the edit page, you should drag the KVR vignette to a layer above your VR video. Place your playhead on the vignette clip and make sure it fills the whole frame. Sometimes I've noticed when I first drag it in, it doesn't fill the entire frame. But if you delete it and drag it in again, it should work. If you see it filling the whole frame, feel free to trim it to fit over the entire clip. Make sure the vignette clip is selected. In the inspector panel, go to the settings tab for the clip. And in the composite section, set the composite mode to multiply. And now there is a vignette covering the edges of the frame for each eye. And that includes the camera lenses in the center. In the inspector panel, go back to the generator tab. And using the diagonal field of view slider, you can change the amount of the vignette. So if you really wanted to focus attention in the center of the frame, you could shrink the vignette. Or I found that a setting of about 200 will cover the lenses without cropping too much out. 
Of course, people watching your video may notice a slightly smaller field of view, but many people will not notice the vignette at all. So now we've applied two Cardiverse effects so we can work with raw footage from the Canon R5C directly here in DaVinci Resolve. The last thing I wanna point out, when you're working with high resolution VR video, as soon as you add effects like the Cardiverse effect, the interface will run slower and you will not get real-time playback. Up at the top, you can click the button to disable color grades and fusion effects. That temporarily disables all effects, including the Cardiverse effects. You won't see the conversions that we just made, but you can edit your video this way. And depending on your system, you can probably get real-time playback. Then you can click that button to re-enable effects when you need to see them. And that's about it. Now we have the Cardiverse tools all set up and everything is working here in the edit page. And soon I will publish another video on this channel where you can see how to use these tools in the Fusion page. So if you do prefer to work in Fusion, be sure to check out that video.